Hi, and welcome back. This is Dr. Barry. I want to talk to you today about a very important subject, vitamin D. Should you take it? How should you take it? What does it do for you? Is it dangerous? Uh, should you check it? Etc. So I'm going to try to share as much of this information as I've learned over the years with you as I can today. First, please take one moment and hit the subscribe button, please. It helps me spread this message to other people who need it. So click that button and click the little bell right beside it. Thank you for that. Now let's talk about vitamin D. And I wanna start by telling you kind of my story as a doctor, and then I'm gonna tell you what you need to do as a person. And at the very end, I'm gonna tell you about the study that showed that taking vitamin D might actually help you get rid of fat around your middle. True story. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But first, let's talk about vitamin D. During all of my medical school and residency training, no one ever taught me about vitamin D supplementation for adult patients ever. Only in newborn patients did we talk about vitamin D drops as supplementation because uh, women don't make vitamin D in their breast milk. At least that's what I was taught, and that's actually not true, and that will be the subject of a subsequent video. But as far as uh, teenagers, adults, elderly people, I was never taught to supplement vitamin D. I was never taught to even check a level. So when I got into practice for the first few years, I had vitamin D was not on my radar at all. Then I was listening to a podcast or a talk radio show, and this guy was talking about magnesium deficiency and vitamin D deficiency and how it was epidemic in America and no one was checking it and no one knew anything about it. And so I thought, hmm, I don't, I don't think that's true, but I'm going to, next time I draw lab work on some patients, I'll check a few vitamin Ds and some magnesiums and we'll just see about that. And I was already checking magnesium and I hadn't seen that uh, at all. And so I started checking some vitamin Ds and at first I was checking a vitamin D 125 which is the wrong test to check. And the more I read, I finally figured out that I need to be checking a vitamin D 25 level in my patients, and that was years ago. And so when I finally got that right, I started to see that far more than 50% of my patients were deficient in vitamin D. And it kind of blew me away. And some people were a little deficient, but some people had almost a zero level of vitamin D in their blood which really worried me. And so I really started to study about vitamin D. I joined the Nas National Osteoporosis Foundation. I, I became uh, very, very interested in bone health and vitamin D. And the more I read, the more I discovered that vitamin D is very important for bone health, but it's also very important for hundreds of other things to optimize your health. Um, I, to this day, I still check vitamin Ds in almost every patient if I check any meaningful amount of blood work whatsoever. And if their vitamin D level's low, I'll optimize that immediately. So the next question is, is which kind of vitamin D should I take? There are two different kinds, uh, mainly. There's vitamin D3, which is the kind of vitamin D you can get over the counter at the health food store or at the pharmacy without a prescription. And then there's vitamin D2. Uh, vitamin D2, you have to have a prescription to get. And so in many doctors' doctor brain, that means that it must be the right kind if you have to have a prescription to get it. And that in this case, the doctor brain is absolutely wrong. Vitamin D3 is much better absorbed than vitamin D2. It's a much more natural way of taking it and you, you actually get much more of an absorption rate from taking vitamin D3. So if your doctor prescribes you vitamin D2, 10,000 units or 50,000 units a, a week or a month, nod and smile and be respectful and then go buy some vitamin D3 and take that once a day because that's a much more natural way to get your vitamin D. Now, obviously most of us know that you can get vitamin D from sunlight. We have played and worked in the sun for so many thousand years that our skin learned how to make a vitamin from sunlight. Sunlight is natural. God made the sun and God made you. And so we can use sunlight to make vitamin D. And if you live close enough to the equator, you can actually get all the vitamin D you need from just playing in the sun. But for those of us who live uh, kind of between, if, if you draw a line between LA and Atlanta in the US, and anybody who lives north of there, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting enough vitamin D from the sun. And the farther nor north you live, the harder it will be. And so our friends in Canada, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, you guys, even on the sunniest of days, 
in the skimpiest of bathing suits, you're probably not going to get enough uh, UV radiation to make enough vitamin D to give yourself the daily supply. So people at very, very northern and southern uh, latitudes have to take a vitamin D supplement or they will be chronically low in vitamin D. So vitamin D3 is better absorbed and you can also increase the absorption of it by taking it with a good quality oil like avocado, cod liver, lard, tallow, um, of, uh, olive oil, any of the good quality oils will help you increase the absorption. You can absorb about 1200 uh, units, international units a day through your gut. But that doesn't mean you should just take 1,200 units because everything in the human body is on a bell curve. And in order to absorb 1,200 units, you're probably going to have to take somewhere between 2,000 and 10,000 international units a day to get 1,200 units to be absorbed. And that's why it's also another bad idea to take 10,000 or 50,000 units of, of vitamin D2 is because when you take that much, you can only absorb so much at one time. And so if you're taking 50,000 international units of vitamin D2 a month, you're going to, you can only absorb 1200 units a day. And so then that, the rest of that vitamin D you excrete away. And then for the rest of the month, you don't have any vitamin D. So that's a very unnatural, not helpful way to take it. So you want to take a daily D3 is how you want to take that. Uh, so we talked about which kinds, vitamin D3. We talked about how much how much the average adult should take probably somewhere between 2,000 and 10,000 international units a day. Now, I advise you to do this uh, with, in partnership with a good doctor who understands vitamin D metabolism and who will check the correct vitamin D lab work to make sure that you're not uh, taking too little or too much. Now, let's talk about vitamin D overdose. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, and for all the doctors and medical personnel out there, you remember that vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble vitamins, and we were taught that you can, you can take too much of those and have terrible overdose symptoms from taking too much of those. But as I read more and more about vitamin D, I thought, well, gosh, there are some people who take a lot of vitamin D, so I'll bet in the literature I'm going to find some very interesting stories about flagrant overdose and, and the terrible symptoms that came along with that. And guess what? No such thing exists in the literature, at least that I can find. If you can find a study that shows that, please send me a copy. But there have been case studies of patients who have taken thousands of times the amount that I've just told you to take for months at a time and suffered no ill effects whatsoever. When the doctor or the patient finally discovered that they were taking too much, they merely decreased their dose back down to the normal dose and everything was fine. There were no deaths. There's never been a death from vitamin D overdose. There's never been a hospitalization, to my knowledge, from a vitamin D overdose. Vitamin D overdose is a myth by and large. And if you're taking your vitamin D in concert with a trusted physician uh, partner who can check your lab work once or twice or four times a year, you're never going to have any meaningful vitamin D overdose. So stop worrying about that. Stop talking about that, you other experts out there. Stop scaring people that they're going to overdose on vitamin D because I've been supplementing people with anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 units of vitamin D for the last decade, and I've seen maybe three people who's uh, uh, vitamin D25 level got over 100, and we merely backed up their vitamin D dose a little bit. It came right back down to normal. They had no idea that, that their level was over 100 because they felt great. So don't worry about vitamin D overdose. It's not a thing, okay? So now we talked about working with a doctor so you could check your levels. That, I think, is very important. Now, some, some people don't think that's important. They don't think vitamin D overdose is any danger whatsoever. I think it may be a mild thing to worry about, but not a big deal. But since your doctor is going to be checking labs once or twice or four times a year anyway, check a vitamin D and that way you will know what your level is. And most likely what's going to happen is you're not taking enough and you'll need to take a little more to get your level up. Very, very rarely will, will anyone be taking too much and have to lower their level. So Please, if you've enjoyed this vitamin D video, please take a second and share it on your social media so other people who are low in vitamin D, who are vitamin D deficient and suffering from that, they can get some help from these videos as well. Now, let me tell you about this one study. You're going to enjoy this. Anybody who has a little too much fat in the middle, you'll like this. 
there was actually a study done where they had two groups of people and, and one group they supplemented with 4,000 international units of vitamin D a day. The other uh, group they did not. And so after a few months time when the study ended, they checked everything, and of course, the ones who were taking vitamin D, their levels were higher. They were No one overdosed, no one died, no one was harmed by the vitamin D supplement. But what they did notice was something funny. The people who'd been taking vitamin D had a lower waist to hip ratio, which means that their belly fat, had, and it was lower than before the study started. So they had, for some reason, redistributed belly fat. They had gotten rid of their belly fat and it was definitely correlated with the vitamin D. Whether the vitamin D caused it or not, there'll have to be another study done to prove that. But for some reason, the fat around their middle got better when they were taking vitamin D supplement. So if anybody ever wants a link to any of the studies, if you'll just comment below, I'll, I'll, I'll post, uh, cut and paste a copy of the link. If you guys have any ideas for future videos, please let me know below. And also I had a comment from a guy who said he couldn't hear me. And uh, my, my AirPods seem to be working really well as a recording device, but if you can't hear me, leave a comment below and I'll, I'll fix that. If you can hear me, leave a comment below and say, yeah, I can hear you fine. That way I know that the audio is coming through loud and clear. And so that's it for today. I'll see you next time.